chaps. Hi. Shalom. Shalom. Hello, viewers. Welcome back to the hashtag prop show. The, the Lettings and the State Agency TV show. Actually. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. 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 Who's going to say it today then? Um, go on, you go. Oh, it's your turn. My turn. Yeah, go with it. Welcome to the show, Run VT. Episode five. 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 High five. Hashtag five. Five. Shalom, 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 shalom. So. News this week. News this week. Um, well, news this week. Halifax. Halifax. Yes. Halifax yeah. have produced uh, their annual report. Um, similar to Nationwide's actually in their results. But they've said that this is uh, since November last year, November 2017, annual house prices have rose at their fastest pace. Um, by 3.3%. And the average house price has gone up? Gone up uh, to 280,000, sorry, 230,000. Average price? Average price That's across good. the UK. Um, although Right Move had a report recently and they uh, said the average asking price was 302,000. So that's quite a lot way below. Well, there's a huge difference between asking prices and values. Obviously, asking prices is what the properties on the market for, and what the flipping world sells for is the, is the value. <laughs> and there's a huge difference. What's um, your opinion of the survey? Do they mean much? Do they carry much weight? Is there a real change? Okay, so these numbers were based on what Halifax are lending on. So if Halifax are lending on a certain sector of the market, then it's only going to reflect the average value of the mortgages that they're actually lending. What do you mean? Well, if, if Halifax are focusing on the lower end of the market or yeah. lower to middle so end you, of so market... You, semis, your terraces, yeah. your, your small first time buyers, first time buyer properties. Then, then, then the average value of the mortgage that they're lending and the price that the property is being bought at is going to be lower. Mm. True, true. The, the, the only index I take any reference from is um, the land registries. Yeah. Uh, because what they actually do is take a property that sold in 1995 and, and the exact same property that sold in 2018 and then work the difference. And if you have multiple properties in the town with multiple prices and different dates, you actually end up with a true valuation because you're actually comparing apples with apples. Okay. Do you think that the Halifaxes survey is t not is tinged with the fact that there's less stock available um i think i think what we're finding around the country as i'm sure you're aware i ghost write articles about local property markets and i'm very lucky enough to write it for about 110 120 locations around the uk on the beat. On the beat. And what, we're, what i'm noticing is is again remember property values are based on properties that have sold three months ago, and that's three months ago when they completed, which meant that this, they exchanged a month before, which meant the sale was agreed two months before that, which means it came on the market about three months before that. Mm -hmm. So we're actually always dealing with data that's always six months out of date. Ah, I see. Okay. Fair enough. I, I think the biggest issue is, is, is um, in, if you talk to estate agents, there isn't just one big housing market in a town. There's lots of micro markets. So you might find in one town there's a glut of terraced houses on the market, but hardly any semis, which means demand and supply means that you can, can't sell a terraced house for love the money. Yeah. But if it's a decent semi in a decent location, then it's, you know, get the pound notes out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just yeah. leave the cash. So, so to say our price is up and down, it, it's easy to say, but in reality, there isn't just one price, there's lots of micro markets, and this is why vendors need decent estate agents to say, look, this is what your house is worth. Because let's be honest, house is worth what someone's prepared to pay for it. Okay. This is true. And as you guys watching know, if you're looking at buying a house, your estate agent in your local area is the expert. We, we are talking to estate agents. So we, we might have some other, other people some might normals watch it. might watch this. Normal non-property lovers <laughs> might watch <laughs> <laughs> this. Strange buggers. Well, no, he's doing that. My, I went for it. It was my birthday yesterday. It's your birthday? Uh, yeah, yesterday. Wasn't your birthday yeah, yeah. yesterday? It was birthday last week. No, seventh yesterday. Actual birthday. Oh, actual birthday. Okay. Oh, no, sorry. Yeah, last week. Yeah. Cut that bit. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, go again. It's my birthday last week. Yeah, but I was chatting to we went for a barbecue, family barbecue at my uh, lovely hi Becky, my girlfriend's sister's house. Hi Mel, um, and she's a head teacher, and she watched the first three shows um, back to back, and she's not interested in the property market apart from that she owns a house. So, so she is interested because she has hats. Yeah, She's interested yeah. in the banter bus. Yeah. The, the banter, banter bus, bus is coming. Anyway, back to the um, Anyway, but she watched it. Yeah, yeah. So. Anyway, let's find out from our um, man on the ground what the market's doing nationwide. Steve says! People always need houses. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, cheers, uh, the, um So, next, you've been with... Josh Rayner. Josh Rayner, UK's most loved recruitment agent. Most loved. All around top bloke, been to it's the studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, an oh, old head on, sorry, on young shoulders. Mm. Yeah. And uh, we had a chat about recruitment, both from the point of view of um, an applicant, how to get the best jobs for you, if you're feeling you're hitting a glass ceiling, yeah. how to get um, pay rises off yeah. your existing boss, um, how to go about getting that next job, what to do when you get counter offers. Uh, maybe we could show a little excerpt here. Sure, could do. Let's uh, have a quick look at when Chris met Josh. Josh, I'm the state agency boss. I've offered a great package to a great valuer and manager. They hand their notice in and then their existing boss goes and counter offers. What do I do? Talk to me. <laughs> It's a massive headache and it's happening more and more. So a lot of the people are using the, the, the counter off and I've got a new job um, to, to try and make more money um, to stay. Um, from my point of view... Do you think they ever had any intention of going? I think they probably did. But again, better than you know sometimes. And is the grass that, that greener, especially in the market and the climate we're, we're in at the moment? Um, all I could say is don't bother re, re-offering that person. If they're going to take a potential counter offer, let them stay where they are. Let them what? Let them stay where they are. I wouldn't get into a bidding war to pay another couple of grand to, to get that person. Do you think, that, is there something that the agent can do to almost keep the door open for the future? Yeah, I'd always say, look, keep my details on file. Um, I'd also ask um, potential employers to come up with their best offer, let's be honest. And I see it time and time again where people offer the lower side of where they offer the job, job adverts. So they've got a little bit of wiggle room yes. um, to, to move to. From my point of view, go in with your strongest offer because counter offers are more and more likely to happen. We're losing 25% of all of our 25%. 25% of job offers to counter offers. Is there anything that you as a recruitment agent or the agent, the agent themselves can do to mitigate that potential loss? No, not necessarily. Every, every time we speak to a candidate, we actually go through what's going to happen when we find you a job. We're that confident. We're going to find you a job, Joe Bloggs, and you are going to be counter offered. What are you going to do? Um, we tell them the reasons why. And if, they, if after that they go, actually, we're going to stay, then... We suggest they actually stay where they are and put their job search on hold. What do you? What would you say to people who said I, w- I would still go and then decide not to? Do you think they were always going to make that decision, or? I think there's lots of things that make that up. Um, nine times out of ten, you're probably right. They never had the, the the ability to go anyway. Surely that pisses you off, shouldn't it? Massively. Uh, it's the, it's the bugbear of our. Of well, our I suppose job. it's like a state agency when someone pulls out just before, two days before exchange. That's that's Mass- just the way of the game. Life, and it's massively frustrating, but there's not a lot you can really do. So. Is there anything else agents can do to mitigate that potential loss? Not really. Um, on the first interview, I'd always say that I'd mention the counter off on the first interview. This is what's going to happen if we do go to the second stage, because I do really like you, Joe Bloggs, um, and you do, and I do offer you a job. Your boss is going to counter off you. In that scenario, what would you do? You then asked it face to face in person. The recruiter hopefully should have done the same thing, and then you've basically got a little bit probably more um, edge in front of if that person is going to actually join you or not. Okay, interesting. Thank you very much. Excellent. Cheers, Chris. Interesting. Very interesting. interesting. I'll tell you what is interesting, because we've privy to a few of the other interviews that haven't been released yet, is Josh does an awesome um, thing where if he places someone uh, with an agency, or an agent, or an estate agent, sorry, um, that if they don't work out in 12 months, then... uh, Money back guarantee, mm. That's which is a bold call. Yeah, it's a bold move, yeah. Like, for someone to fit in and yeah, yeah, for a yeah, year. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty good. But yeah, good guy. Those rest of those videos are on your YouTube They're on the YouTube, YouTube channel, YouTube channel yeah. and, and we've got a little playlist as well. Okay, so subscribe if you want to see below. It, you can subscribe below. We'll put it in the comments. 
really important note there when it comes to you guys doing your videos and your YouTube channels. Don't set up a proper channel. Mm -hmm. You've got to agree with me on this one. Yeah? Do, yeah. 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 And then also set up little playlists. So if you're doing your buy to that deals, put all the buy tech deals in one little section. If you're doing your property market updates, do that. If you're doing your digital mayor where you're talking to your local people in your town, put those as little yeah. playlists. It keeps people on your channel. And at the end of each video, you know on YouTube, you it like comes up with suggestions. Mm -hmm. You can actually um, tell YouTube what video to watch next. Yeah. As opposed to yeah, like yeah, a, so it just spurting you off to cat and food status. Yes, cat's hot. Although I do live cat's moustaches. Um, <laughs> Hi to all the cat's moustaches. Me out. Um, so maybe we could do a video of that on another day. What cat's with moustaches? No. Fuck's <laughs> sake. <laughs> so best me trying to <laughs> solve with the eagles. I'm going to run around with these turkeys. <laughs> <laughs> um, Come on. So, on next week's show, you've got, got, we got Nigel Manson. Nigel Manson with, with a moustache. With a moustache. Yeah, oh, with cats. cats with moustaches. <laughs> yes. You've got Nigel Manson avec moustache. No, not Nigel Manson. Yeah, the Formula One. No, yeah, no. Brian, uh, uh, Brian Mansell. Brian. And uh, Brian Mansell's coming over, and he is Agency All Stars, and he's going to talk to us about something quite controversial. Oh, we like that. Interesting. Yeah, well. And say no more. Say no more. Watch next week to find out. Um, right. It's question time. <laughs> Long VT. <laughs> so, this is my new Question Masters hat. What's come out of my. Uh, David Dimbleby would wear that. It's come out of my new. It's come out of my. Uh, you look alright to that. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> You've been privy to a few hats in your time. Generally. Hey, I tell you what, you need a. You need one of them. Uh, I need a red trilby. Red trilby, yeah. I need yeah. a red trilby like you. So, just what like I want to do is find <laughs> so take a couple of some questions, just like that. Just like that. Uh, it allows me to use my very favourite joke, uh, which is what I say. I thought you had got the bloody questions ready. I had, I had the questions ready, and then we start talking about Nigel Mansell. Okay. And then... Brian. It's Brian that's, that's coming, right. not Nigel. <laughs> that's right, not Nigel. And then what happened was... Because Brian's not a brummy. Lost so the, six more I, lost, I lost the thread. <laughs> you don't want to go on the door, you, you never had it in so, the first place. Questions into the show. <laughs> so I've got one for you, Christopher. Oh, right. Okay. You did tell so, me it is. Uh, Nick Cheshire um, commented. He wanted Hi, to Nick. Know, Hi, Nick. Hi, Nick. Hi, Nick. Um, he wanted to know um, with Right Move, we did touch on, on in, in another episode, about the difference between premium featured listing products uh, and okay. whether. In your opinion, our opinion only, don't sue us. Whether, in your opinion, that money might be better spent investing in video marketing or doing stuff in your local community. So, are we actually asking a, a, what is exactly? So, the exact question is Is it wise to invest in premium featured listing products or invest the same amount into video and promote it on social media? Right, so uh, that. Is the bit where you know if you've gone to right move and it puts a bigger photographs, a couple more photographs underneath. Yeah, I know what premium is. Big, well, some of these guys might not know. <laughs> they should do. They use it. They should do. They use okay. Um, me personally, um, if you're rubbish at video and you've not been trained by the likes of either Chris Kiriakou, hi Chris, hi Chris, or Paul Long, yeah, then then the easy route is to press the button and and have the featured listing. Yeah. Okay. Yet, if you can take that amount of money, that because it does cost money, and I can't remember exactly how, so don't even ask me, okay. but I know it costs a reasonable amount. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you are good at video and you've got some good photography, the, um, Alan Bat from Wigan. Hi, Alan. Friend of the show. Friend of the show. Um, and, and Michelle and oh, yeah. Paul, yes. They've done some amazing campaigns on Facebook. They have. We're using video. And had really great response. Particularly using the Canvas style advert, which is, is a, I believe, a new new bit of kit. It looks fantastic. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Okay, good answer. Matthew. But you've got to be good. You've got to be you've got to be good at video. You've you got a little bit. So oh. Well, well uh, on, on the back of that, I would say, <laughs> yes, always invest in some video because as we keep banging on about it, whether you believe us or not, video is not going away. Like you are biased, though, aren't you? Yeah. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> it's backed up with science and facts. So <laughs> we're <laughs> chatting. To I some... guess we are biased, but I mean, to be honest, look, there's a reason why we're busy. 
Double busy. Double busy. Double busy. There's a reason because the, social media requires content. Your websites require content. Your yeah. Businesses require content and marketing content. You know, we work with traditional media. We're filming award ceremonies for two local newspapers um, in the next six weeks. Yeah, yeah. So they do still exist, but we're filming their video content for their awards. Even they know traditional print media value video content yeah. and that content will be used on their social channels. Yes. So it's not just the property industry, well, it's it, everywhere. Well, it's TV, isn't it? It's TV. And yeah. my kids, I don't know about yours, but my children, other than a bit of Netflix, they're more interested in YouTube than they are in terrestrial oh, TV. Oh, yeah, yeah. So... Well, Chris Evans, Radio 2, uh, Breakfast Show fame, they don't have a TV in the house. I mean, it's not for everyone. Some people like to relax to it, but on I Sunday, didn't have a TV for the first two years yeah, of being married. It's a very creative you didn't have any money there. environment. <laughs> <laughs> they have one hour on YouTube a week. The well. family, yeah. It's black and white. Then. I mean, the power it's of the pig in it. Power of video. Um, our friend of the show. We've got so many friends. Yeah, the show, show. Uh, Michael Hollenby. Oh, does, is Michael coming on? Um, I spoke to him. T I spoke to him last week, and he said he's well up for it. Michael, get yourself to Grantham. You've got no excuse. He's double busy. He's been before. He, he, but not to be on the show. No. He's fifteen miles away. He's got, his, he's got his own show, which is pulling up trees in Bourne. How many? Show. How many viewers did they have last week on the Bourne property show? Um, the, the episode from two or three weeks ago. Two remember weeks ago. the um, the population of Bourne is only seventeen and a half thousand. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And the average view time, the show is around 20, 25 minutes long. Yeah. The average view time is eighteen minutes. Really? Uh, within the first week, most shows get between four. 5,000 views with an average view time of 80 minutes. Brilliant. Where the hell are you going to get 20% sort of, of the town? But again, this is interesting because he links them back to previous videos, yeah. like we do at the end of this YouTube mm -hmm. video, you can go and see all the old yeah, episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People will jump on and say, well, like your oh, friend in the yeah. bath yes. would want to watch the old ones. Um, one of them from about a month ago is up to 11,000 views. Fantastic. Fantastic. With not just Three second views. Yeah, yeah, proper, proper. Actual 15, watching. 20 yeah, yeah, minutes yeah, yeah, yeah. watching. Okay. That's Matthew. the way forward. Did you met? We need yeah. back to video. Well, well, I was just going to finish on a video. Well, I was reading a book on holiday in France uh, a couple of weeks ago. And basically... Um, Which book was that, I think? Uh, well, we don't have to keep back on. Yeah, we did. It was crushing it. Crushing oh, it. The amazing Gary Venture. But um, this was a conversation, uh, a, a stat or a, a talking point that came from reading the book and telling my dad about something, is that a lot of people now think, oh, it's, it's, it's gone, this YouTube phase, but we've missed it or I've not been on the bandwagon early enough. YouTube was set up in 2006, 2002, somewhere around there. So it's only been going sort of 10, 15 years. And then do you think YouTube's going to go for another 200 years? We're only at the start of the timeline. That's yeah, right. but I tell you, you have not missed the boat. Hold on, board. hold on. Um, someone said to me, what if everyone starts doing video? So, everyone will watch video. Everyone is watching everyone video. Is watching. Well, it is, they're watching TV, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. But I tell you here and now, a lot of people have not, I've got this fear of, of looking down the camera like this and talking to people. Me too, it's terrifying. Okay, <laughs> scary. <laughs> that shit, that shit bit of kit. Oh, <laughs> damn, it's my favourite camera. <laughs> if it was any bigger, you could jump it into, throw it into a swimming pool. <laughs> yeah, well yeah, but phone lens is miniature in comparison to this bad boy. Yeah, true, but, true. Um, um, but we actually teach people on our training course. We do. Because we do a, vi a training course. Do plug time. Plug. Plug time. Plug. Yeah, we need the golden plug. plug. We need, we need, we need, need a, a golden prop. plug. We need a plug. Any plumbers out there watching, you send, send us, us a plug. A golden plug. Yeah, golden we need plug. to spray gold. Spray gold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and put some glitter on it. Yeah, like and literally have it on a plant. Okay. A Lasers. Lasers. <laughs> golden plug. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we've got a course on the 10th of September. Yes. Okay. It's available now to book on Eventbrite. Uh, and yeah, you can find it on our Facebook page or put, put a link down below. Um, but yeah, yeah so that's three for the day. Yeah. Th maximum okay. of eight people, three trainers, or yeah, three yeah. and a half actually. Three and and, half. and um, yeah. this time, and uh, we'll teach you what to film, yeah, how, to how to film, how to get over your fear. The best look, which leads us nicely on to a question from Matthew. Um, what are our top five pieces of equipment to get started in video marketing? Which came from Luke Sinclair. So Luke oh, knows this, I think Luke was in the studio last, last week. Last week yeah. he, uh, Great uh, feedback from the show, by the way. Oh, thanks, um, the, um, it wasn't to you, it was to, for Luke. <laughs> <laughs> Burn. That's why he's gone with a hat. It's a deep burn, <laughs> just to cover my face. I need some aloe vera that got burned. Um, God, it's hot in the face. <laughs> um, 
yeah, so top five bits of equipment, but we've done a show, uh, we've done a video about that, so why don't we run that video and then we can add to it after. Okay, run VT. Okay guys, so we're here today to look at the sort of kit that you as a letting or estate agent need to, to enable you to do some videos. So the first thing you need to do is spend thousands of thousands of pounds. Whoa, 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 no, 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 don't. No, you don't. No? We're going to talk you through something that for under 100 quid, probably near 80 pounds, but definitely under 100 pounds depending on the models you choose, you can get set up and start shooting your own video today, this afternoon. Get on Amazon be delivered by tomorrow. Okay, so obviously your phone isn't something that you're gonna have for under 100 pounds, but as we all know, everyone's got one of these handy little gizmos in their pocket, so you've already got, hopefully, one of these. You might even be watching this video on your phone. Absolutely, good so stuff. as long as you've got one of these, you can make some cool video. Yeah, good. Now, golden rule, steady. No one likes, unless you're watching Blair Witch Project or something well, like that. Or like an that. action movie. Yeah. I didn't or like that film. Yeah. 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 No, no, I don't like stuff like that. Scary. Too scary. But you want something steady. And plus, if you're out in the field on your own, and it's just you, obviously, you want to stand up your camera, and you want to stand in front of it, start talking, not worry about this handheld, shaky thing going on. So, Chris, how much would a tripod be? Well, I mean, that one's, you know, a professional model, but you can pick them up for as little as £25, maybe £30. Amazon, Wex online, phenomenal camera supplier. Yes, yeah. um, you know, and um, yeah, you can be steady for under thirty quid. But Chris, I, I, I can't seem to. It doesn't seem to stick on the on no, the. Well, so, so what, of course what do it I do? won't. But you know, these things are super cheap. This is a little camera bracket. We don't use the word cheap. We use the word inexpensive. inexpensive. <laughs> um, so this little inexpensive gizmo. Uh, it's got a little foot on the bottom that attaches just to the to the top of your tripod. Just screw that bad boy in, and he's only a fiver. And that will give you a nice landscape uh, photo, uh, photo or video um, straight away. Just screw straight in. So so far, thirty. Thirty-five pounds. Good stuff. Bargain. Okay, so so um, sometimes we've got these things called a selfie stick, whatever one of these is. Um, so so talk to me through about this because this looks a really expensive model. You could have spent more than two quid on that one. Chris. Uh, no, this is about another fiver, <laughs> maybe a tenner if you buy a good wow, one. Wow. Spend... Um, I know, right? <laughs> uh, effectively, effectively your mobile tripod. So yeah. it's exactly the same principle um, as this little chap with the foot. Just clip them in the front and you're good to go. Um, obviously, you have to think about positioning, um, your height, uh, and everything else. We're going to do a video we'll on that. We'll do some stuff yeah. about that later, later on. This, this okay. is just kit. This good is stuff. just getting you set and ready to go. Okay, so do you use the microphone that's in the camera, uh, sorry, in the phone, to, to, to record? You can. You can. You can. But... This little puppy is 10 pounds, 10 quid. That one's a uh, Amazon special, um, obviously not professional grade, but it will give you quite good sound. Now it's good, important to mention, you know, sound is crucial. We're gonna talk in more detail about sound and, and the value of sound uh, in a later video, but, but sound really, really important. Um, and this is gonna massively improve your sound massively. for a tenner. Gents, you're gonna be wearing a suit or a tie. Ladies, maybe wearing a scarf or a tie to work. Depends how you dress, but Easy peasy. This pops into the bottom of your phone. Et voila. Easy peasy. Uh, then, but, but some of some of our some of our viewers here have got iPhone sevens. So, okay, you know, so, so you're not gonna be able to have be able no, to plug this in. Now so you've got this one here. I think it's this one here, isn't it? Oh you can plug that in, yeah. Good stuff. So if you've got an iPhone 7, it comes with a little adapter thing that you plug into the bottom of your iPhone and then you plug in your headphones. That way. Again, on a later video, we'll do some nice tight close-ups and show you how it works and why it works. What have you got in your hand there? Because to be honest with you, um, there's an awful lot of people out there that are using microphones. They plug it into their phone and it doesn't work. So what's the score on that one then? And why the hell should they need to spend money on one of these? Well, they look similar, don't they? But they do. if you look very carefully, and again, we'll do some close-up shots in when we do the microphone video, but one's got two rings on and one's got three rings on. And basically, if you put that two ring into a phone, it won't work. It, won't it needs work. to go into a three ring. Right. So you need this adapter. And uh, on the screen now is what it's called. I think it's called a TRS to a TRRS yes. or something. Yeah, something it's, technical. Something technical. I can't be doing with technical. But how much was this? Three, four quid three, from, four Am quid. from Amazon. Movies three, four Union. Quid. So 25 ish, tenner, 35, another tenner, 45. FOC from three, Apple, unless you've thrown it away. three or four quid, another fiver. That is your kit for £100. Excellent. Good to go. 
good stuff. So now what we need to know is how to film and uh, put a bit more detail. So let's go for the next video now, chaps. Eh? Okay, right. see you in the next see you later. Cheers, Thanks, guys. guys. See you So that's our kind of short video about the kind of getting into. A bit yeah, that's of a good. That's a good low so budget. Good, to low start budget with. cost is relatively insignificant. Mm. Um, what we didn't talk about there were some kind of wireless mics and gimbals and stuff. But I think don't need it. You, you kind of don't. Not to like, start with. Really, you know, what we're filming with. I mean, obviously we've got lighting in here and we've got proper microphones hanging from the ceiling, from the ceiling. My mic. Um, you know, and all that sort of jazz, but. Realistically, as long as you've got a tripod, as in the video, yes. a phone bracket, yep. and your phone, that's it. You could you could do this, you know, and make something awesome for you for your clients. And then probably twenty quid microphone plug in. Yeah. If yeah. you send us uh, an email, we'll send you we'll some send you uh, spatial putty and some le and some facial flaps. Some facial some flaps. Lens putty. Lens putty. Yeah, yeah. Free charge. Yeah, yeah. Won't be branded. What the hell are you talking about? Oh, you see, you know. If you come on the course, we give it. Oh, damn. You've got to come on the course by now. Course of fire. Yeah. Intriguing. Two two budget fixes for your phone that will uh, stop you feeling so awkward in front of it. Yeah. So that's okay. the end of question time. Good, we can put that silly hat back. Is there anything else left to bore these, uh, sorry, interest these people oh, out there? Yes, we wanted just to talk, we had, as we said, we had Luke in the studio last week. Uh, and we, they did some, uh, Luke and Harry, who came with us. Hi, Harry. Hi, Harry. Um, How's that vlog going, Harry? Did, so, keep moving the gimbal. Keep moving. Uh, they came to some one-on-one, -on -one, or two to two, I guess, training, but yeah. like one-to-one -one training um, with us to take their stuff. I mean, Luke already does brilliant stuff. He's advanced. Yeah. He does brilliant stuff already. But he wanted some to have a look at gear, have a look at how he can progress further, show us some of his work. We had a look at what they do now and how they can tweak it and make it better. So I'm hoping that that stuff will be even, even better and he's already good, so watch out for that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, he we did a little test um, which blew yeah, out all of you, his mind. All of you guys out there will be um, either employing someone to take your photos of houses, properties you've got on the market, or you'll have someone in the office or you'll be doing it yourself. And most of you will probably have a 10 mil lens, which is... Some will and some won't. So some will have like the stock one that just comes right, with the camera, because okay. the one that comes with your camera is like... Most go down to around 24 mil. 18, 18 18 is quite rare. 18, well no, your stock lens, it comes with your Nikon, your Canons, all that sort of thing. They're, they're an 18 to 55, which is like a mid-rangey lens, yeah? Without getting into the detail, an 18 is not an 18 because of the sensor type, but that doesn't matter. What it means is 18, 18, it's not tech talk. 18, 18, yeah, this is tech talk. It is tech talk. So 18 is pretty wide, yeah? But we've got a 10 mil, and I know Luke's got a 10 mil lens, yeah? yeah? And that is like wide, wide. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you just quickly now the difference, the same photograph taken at 18 millimeters, and then the same photograph again taken at 10. So here's the one at 18. So if you look at the photos now, this one's at 18 millimeters. So this room you can see, you know, a good amount of detail, a good amount of stuff in here. And now this one's at 10 mil. Note how much further back you get. Now, if you're using this for filming, or you're using this for your photography, mm -hmm. then you're going to get a lot more in your room. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, people probably take you know the mick out of estate agents for uh, saying the box room is a uh, like a double bedroom. Um, mm -hmm. But with these you know, sort of range on the mills and the lenses, the lower the better, you can stand in the corner of quite a small room yeah. and make it look quite big. Yeah. Well, interestingly, I had a conversation on that their social media last week cool. about the number of photographs that you should actually put on a right move listing. How many should you put on there? Well, I think an awful lot of estate agents put too many photographs on. What's right. the average? Well, right move reckon you should only put nine on. I think it's nine. Yeah. But a lot put like 20, 30. And the thing is, the photos are designed to get the viewing, not sell the house. The viewing will sell that's the right, house. That's right, but that's exactly what that's we were true. saying to Luke and Harry last week. Mm -hmm. So Harry produced a video of a property tour. Yeah. And like a lot of the ones we see, he got an exterior, not the right one, but that's fine, he's learning. But like... The right house? No, the, the <laughs> wrong just, angle of the house. He shot it from next to a bush and yeah, not really got the front of the house. But. Okay. But so we've got the... And then he walks in and the first thing he shows you is a pokey downstairs WC. You don't need to see that. No. You don't need, need to, to do. Well, what he said to is who bought a house? Who bought a house? And who, who's, who's buying your house, right? Who's buying it? What they're what they interested in? I, I use the example of I hate my house as kitchen. Sucks. Galley kitchen, great house. Fantastic garden, 
I love all of it, apart from the kitchen, it's useless. You need to extend it out of that. Oh, yeah. But, <laughs> but the problem you've got is you don't want it to see the walkthrough. And like you've said with the, with the number of photos, the same is for your video. You want to go to the key locations, the things that are going to be the selling points of your house. So go to your kitchen if it's got a small bone, it's got melee appliances. You know, show off a really smart kitchen, right? Garden. Show off a beautiful garden. Yeah, show off the outside space. Master show bedroom. off the master bedroom, especially if it's got But not suite. everything. But not everything. Mm. And that one, it will keep your video shorter. Yes. Makes it more watchable because two minutes is really the drop off for mm -hmm. maximum on Facebook and YouTube. And two, people won't see the first the first thing that they won't see will see is a beautiful kitchen or a beautiful bathroom or a beautiful window. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't want to be show everybody. You just need to know there is a downstairs toilet. Yeah. So you they know, know that because they've got a floor plan. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Remember guys, on your videos always start off the first few seconds with the name of the street and the town underneath in big letters for yeah. two or three seconds yeah, yeah. because that is what Facebook and LinkedIn will pick up as the starting image and yeah. it says St Mary's Avenue Leicester and I'm scrolling through and I'm in Leicester oh yes I watched that That's big top tip there top tip. top tip we should have a top tip of the week we can have another hat, can we? Yeah, <laughs> okay. we can bring your red hat I miss the red hat well, you know, it comes out That's we will have a hat Themed we week. have a hat themed Suggestions okay. on the uh, link below Sug for uh, hats, hats we can wear. <laughs> I literally have hundreds. <laughs> one okay. dome haven't come through yet with the, with the glasses. One dome! No, 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 no merch, no sun. No merch, no sun. No merch, no sun. We're not seeing one dome anymore, that's it, they've scrubbed. There's no more seeing Unless they come through, I've sent the address. Yeah, we'll have to switch it to. And if there's any other firms out there that want to send us some freebies, we can come up with a song and give it to all the, and give all their freebies to our guests that come in. I love that you're using that. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, uh, so that's it, boys. That's it. That's, that's another show in the can. That's a, thanks that's again. The Magic Five. Good stuff. Awesome. So thanks, mate. Thank you very much. And uh, cheers for watching, guys. Shut up!